What's going on guys? Hello from Sydney, Australia. I'm here for the Vans Bull Comp. Just arrived, so I'm, I'm a little tired, but like I said, we just arrived. I just got to the hotel and put my stuff down. So um, just getting organized. Um, I'll give you a little view of the hotel room right now. It's uh, looking pretty nice actually. I got my whole setup, computer, ready to edit some videos. Got some snackies, new hat, sunblock because I'm pale and I need sunblock at all times. <laughs> Otherwise I melt, so that's why that's there. Got some sunglasses, um, you know, some uh, battery stuff, TV uh, in this bag. We'll show you what's in there in a little bit. But uh, this is my view, not a bad view. It's actually beautiful outside right now too. So um, unfortunately the weather is looking like it might be raining the next few days or more. So I'm really hoping that stops. I got enough of the rain. I came here to ride in the sunshine. So let's get some sunshine, please. I need to get my tan on, my bronze. Um, but yeah, so I was just gonna show you guys the room and then uh, kind of, I don't know, like if you guys are wondering what like a professional athlete packs, when he goes on a trip, I was gonna kinda of show you what I got in my bag. So here's my bag down here. Um, I'll pull it out for you. Uh, let's go through the clothes real quick. This is what I got. This is my underwear. Big stack of underwear. I'm here for 12 days, so I'm, I'm kinda of having to pack a little heavy this time. Uh, board shorts, some pants, just in case it gets cold, which it might. Shorts, things like that. And we got a whole bunch of t-shirts. Got a bunch of Vans t-shirts, Haro t-shirts. Um, and then you move to this side and this this is my gear bag That's where I keep all my pads and tools and whatever else I might need for uh, For my bike if you open it up. I got a knee brace in there too, CTI knee brace Which uh, is good because I don't have an ACL and I haven't had an ACL for like eight or nine years now So those guys have been hooking up Braces are awesome. If you're ever in the market for one I definitely suggest checking them out because they've been holding up I mean, they've kept me together for years, so um, tried and true. But yeah, um, attached to that, we got some death gloves. But yeah, that's that's kind of my gear bag right there. I'll take that out. And then these are essential tools of the trade. This thing is called a Theracane. This is a lifesaver to have on the road. It might look like some kind of weird device, but I will show you what it's all about. You go like this. You take it like this. Oh, look at that massage your back it says triggers these points all over the place you can use it in your, oh, right there dang that hurts actually that plane ride jacked with me 14 and a half hours will that give you a knot i'll do some more of that later but this thing is amazing this is an amazing thing to have around the next thing i'm gonna pull out of there is this this is a roller i think it's called the rumble strip or the rumble roller and it's uh it's just got all these crazy bumps on there and you roll on that it's like having all these little fingers massage your back so this thing i try to travel with a lot because after practicing especially bull comps where you're just pumping and pumping and pumping non-stop this thing is amazing on the legs and on the butt because let's be honest all or most bmx's have big butts because they pump around the bull corners a lot so um yeah and then looking back in here we got flip-flops and the half calves which i'll be riding in um I know I did an unboxing and I was telling you guys about some shoes that I got. These shoes though, I just put these on and some of you guys left comments saying the Kyle Walker shoes were awesome. Dude, they were amazing. Just just chilling and they were awesome. But these ones, I think I'm gonna try to ride in these ones as well. Um, Cause they just, they felt great, man. Like they really, really felt great. Just uh, just kicking around and through and going through the airport. So I was really uh, pleasant surprised on that, so. Kyle Walkers, go out and grab some if, uh, if you haven't yet. Um, and then, like I said, this one, this bag right here, it's a golf bag, but there's not golf clubs in there. This is where I pack my bike. So I'm gonna open this up and kind of show you guys what I'm dealing with, what I'm riding with, um, my setup, and um, go from there. All right, here we are. Um, like I said, my bike is inside of here. It might not look like you can fit a bike in here, but once you break it all down, it fits pretty nicely. There is a way I gotta kinda file it all in there to make sure it fits, but I got the system down pat. So let's open it up and see how we uh, see how we do it. Where's the zippers at? Interesting thing about this is um, years ago, uh, I rode for Ogeo, which is the company that makes this bag. And uh, they brought myself and like Rob Darden and Josh Harrington to the office and were like, hey, we want to do a bike bag. Like, 
let's let's start thinking about this. So we all started like talking about what we wanted. It was like we need a bag that looks like this and this shape. And then they brought out a golf bag. They're like, well, can we base it off of this? And we all kind of looked at each other. It was like, well, that might work. <laughs> and like that golf bag might be the ticket. And they're like, really? Okay. And then we started looking into it. And it turns out they don't really charge for golf bags. So you can actually just roll this on. But if you tell them I have a bike, they charge you like 80 bucks each way. So it was just like this perfect storm. And that was literally the first time that I know of that we ever talked about doing golf bags. So like, it's kind of cool that I was a part of that conversation. And then this is kind of the normal thing now for BMXers is like they use golf bags. So as you can see, it's all piled in here. I just pulled out the handlebars, but um, you know, we got to take out those and the stem, the fork and the wheel comes off. And then my helmet, this guy fits in there pretty nicely. And then I put a little towel over the frame. Although this frame's kind of beat up because um, I've been riding for a little while, still want to protect it. So, and then yeah, there's the frame. Um, I got some other stuff like the pedals. Uh, where are they? Pegs, here they are. Um, I had to take two off in order to fit it all in there, make sure it fit. And I don't know where the pedals are. I might've left them at home. Uh, did I leave them at home? Oh, I left them at home. Um, not a big deal. I have backups, metal ones, but uh, I usually run plastic, but I guess this will have to do. I'll run the metal ones. I'm glad I put those in there. I'm glad these are in there, backup. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of the ticket. And then we'll just kind of throw it together and I'll talk you through uh, how I set my bike up. So the first thing I like to do is just kind of get everything loosely assembled. So um, talking about the frame, this is a Haro lineage frame. Um, it's like a candy apple red, really, really nice. I, as soon as I saw this red, I was like, man, I want to ride this bike. So um, I put it together last year for X Games right before it and uh, it turned out perfect. Some bikes, I feel like they just go together super easy and some bikes, they really fight you. And I don't know why it is that way, but like this one just went together super easy. Everything from like, getting the bottom bracket in, to putting the cranks on, uh, the brakes, everything was just like smooth sailing. So usually when that happens, it's like, you kind of get this good feeling about the bike. And I had a great feeling about this bike. So, and I still do, I love riding it, but um, pretty soon I'm, just, I'm gonna be switching it out for my signature frame, um, which I think when I get back from this trip to Australia, it'll be waiting for me. So I can build that up and we'll do another video about that. Just kind of showing you what parts I'm gonna put on it and stuff. But yeah, so right now we're just building this bike. Like I said, Haro Lineage Red and for the forks, we also have the Haro Lineage Fork. And on that is the front wheel. I use the Haro, what are these called? The SATA, the SATA wheels. And uh, they've been pretty good. They're lightweight, they're strong. I haven't had too many problems with it. I got the Haro, or the, sorry, the premium CK tire on there. Um, there it is, the logo. 2.0s, I run them real thin. Um, that's just my preference, but they make them in 2.4s, I think too. So that's also good. Um, and then the front brakes, I got demolition front brakes. They've hooked them up for me for a while now, so I appreciate it. And then the, the pads I use are these ghost pads. I don't know if you can see them, but they're the Odyssey ghost pads. And uh, they're, they're small. They're really, really small, which, which kind of is weird at first, but they work so good. Like they work really, really good. So I've been really impressed with those. I run those front and back. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of what I'm running the front. I think I have a demolition headset. Um, Odyssey linear uh, front brake cable right here. So I'm gonna take off the headset and just get this fork on there. Slide that right through. Boom, boom, too easy. Put the headset bearings back in there. Slide that down, bam. All right, and then now we have the handlebars. These are my signature bars from Haro. Um, these are some prototypes I've been running for a while. Super impressed by them, really strong, really durable. Um, I love the look of four piece. I ran them forever before I switched to two piece. And then uh, when it came time to do some signature stuff like the frame, I was like, hey, can we do the bars again too? Cause four piece kind of became popular again. And I was like, I think it might be time, bring them back. So this is like pretty much the exact same design um, look wise the dimensions are a little bit different to kind of feel more like modern day bars but um, look wise they look exactly like what I was running before so I'm, I'm really happy with that I got the Edwin animal grips on there um, just super nice and cushy I love these things Odyssey levers uh, lineage uh, front load stem 
Um, what else we got here? Some, uh, uh, what are these? RO, no, these are the Odyssey RNs. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the, 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 the cockpit, I guess, if you will. And then you put those on there. Oh, whoops, gotta put the gyro plate on first. Don't forget about that. Need the gyro plate on there. Press that down there. Sweetness. All right. And then I always like to connect the gyro right off the bat. That way I don't forget about it. And it's just done. And then you slip this top cap right on over the uh, cable there. And then you just thread that in there. I kind of need some grease. This thing doesn't want to thread very easily for some reason. So there we go. Throw it on there. And then you get the old wrench out with the extension. The nice thing about this is that, I'll try to get it so you can see, is that there's a little cutout right there on the side. And that's where this cable goes. So that way I can still put the extension in there to tighten it up, but it keeps that cable out of the way. Whoa! Knock you out with a camera! <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, so I, you know, it makes it life a little bit easier if you can just uh, get that cable out of the way when you're tightening this up. And then you just get a, the extension, put it in there, tighten it up. Just kind of spin this thing around while we're tightening it. Almost there. So this part of the bike build process is, a, for me, a very important part. Um, this has to do with how tight your headset is. Um, for me, I need it to be like perfect. I can't be too tight because then the bars won't spin, but it can't be too loose because then you have a loose headset and that's like, that's just more annoying than anything. It's just, I hate feeling that like, that, th 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 that looseness. I can't have that when I'm building a bike. It's just, it doesn't work for me. So I had to have it that perfect tension. So I think this is actually too tight. So I'm gonna loosen this up a little bit. And for me, I always feel like when I can twist this top plate a little bit, just move it a little bit, then that's kind of the right tension. So I'm gonna tighten up a little bit more and then feel that, that's pretty good. And then the ultimate test is basically just pick the bike up with the bars and then you let it spin. And if it kind of spins pretty loosely, that's pretty good. Then that's, that's usually where I leave it. Um, and that way it's just, it's, it'll probably loosen up as I ride it. I'm sure I'm gonna take some hard landings out there so that'll loosen it up too. Um, you know, I'm not the smoothest dude out there so I'm pretty much uh, banking on the fact that I'm gonna hang up or land a little low, just trying to get used to the course. So, um, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of that. Tighten the stem up, make sure that's nice and tight. There, there's been a couple of times actually, kind of embarrassed to, to say it, but uh, where I got to the, the contest or the town that I was having the contest in and built my bike up and then I forgot this part of the process like literally forgot to tighten my stem up and uh got to the course be riding around and <laughs> next thing you know um luckily I didn't get hurt but like the next thing you know that you you look down and your tire is like off and you're like oh my goodness I totally forgot to tighten the stem and I'm lucky because it could be much much worse you could actually land and your whole front wheel could just go to the side and all of a sudden you're left sitting there with well you wouldn't be sitting you well you might be sitting actually you'd be on the ground because all of a sudden you, if your wheel turns that can just turn into an instant slam and a bad one too because you would not be ready for it so i'm hoping that's straight so another another thing you always have to deal with is making sure that wheel's straight um then basically next i hook up the front brakes uh throw that cable into the lever boom and then go down here Tighten this part up, and because this wheel isn't centered because uh, I haven't tightened it yet, there's one peg missing. Oh, ow! Gotta get that thing in there. Gotta get it forced in there. Doesn't want to go. There it is. All right. So everything's for the most part hooked up. Now I just have to put the pegs back on. That's next. Actually, you know what? No, I'm sorry. Next up, I'm gonna put the seat in. The seat post sorry so this is the one if you look back at a video seatless riding 
I got a new post. It's the same carbon wrap one. Um, I marked it, held off how far to put in there. It's still below that line, so technically, still not following what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> but uh, I have my own requirements for how high my seat needs to be. So um, my rule of thumb is it has to feel good. You know, it's got to feel good for me. So I run, and I've always run, a really high seat. So for me. I gotta be able to pinch that seat with my knees. It's gotta feel good, um, and that's that. So if I had to sacrifice a little bit, you know, if I had to keep on replacing the seat posts, so be it. But this is uh, this is a source of a lot of my pinching, a lot of the bar spins, suicides, one head X ups, all that stuff. I pinch, so I gotta have a lot of seat posts and a seat there to pinch. So that's that's me. All right, let's flip this thing over and. Put on some of these pegs. Now I was kind of thinking about I was kind of thinking about riding pegless this contest. Um, it's a cement bowl. I don't think I'm going to be doing a whole lot of grinding, so I was kind of thinking that I might just take them off, and I might still. I'm going to put them on just because they're here and I like pegs. But I'm still kind of thinking that maybe I'll just take them off. I mean, I'm going to see. If I'm, if I'm riding the course and not really doing many peg stalls or toothpicks or anything like that, I might just take them off. Because at this point, it's kind of pointless if I'm not going to be using them. You know, it's just extra weight and it might feel kind of cool to ride without pegs. So, because um, that's something I don't usually do. I'm usually always with pegs. All right, and then tighten it up. Give it a couple good wrenches on there. Uh, you don't want your wheel slipping. Chain's nice and tight. Oh, yeah. All right, now let's get the front peg back on there. I'm kind of thinking now, if I did, it might look kind of weird, but, um, you know, a lot of times I'm just doing toothpicks. I'm not really double peg, and I'm definitely not usually ice pick grinding or ice pick stalling anything. I'm kind of on the front, front pegs a lot, so it'd be, it'd be kind of funny just to have one peg. <laughs> on there just just the front peg and that's it just basically just for toothpicks <laughs> it, uh, to me honestly it'd probably be more weird for me because i'd just be looking at it going like whoa this is just one peg it'd be it'd, it'd probably visually look weird it might feel weird too but more visual um so i'm just tightening this up this wheel needs to be pulled to the side a little bit to straighten it out with the where it sits and then i'm going to tighten this up Check it out, make sure it's in the middle. I think it's in the middle. Pretty, pretty close. You can always adjust it later. Tighten that up. Bam. I'm gonna have a look see real quick. Yeah, pretty good. It's a slight, slightly, slightly off. I might fine tune that a little bit later. But um, yeah, I should do the trick. Last but not least, we got the pedals. The pedals that I forgot. I forgot them. I had some uh, nice gold pedals. gold pedals from Mira. I miss that dude. Um, so I was I was trying to have that on my bike. Unfortunately, I forgot them, so that's a bummer. But I had these ones in the in the bag as backup, so I'm happy for that. But yeah, go pedals from here. If you guys haven't done it yet, go out and paint your pedals and honor a guy that just a legend, man. Did so much for the sport. It's crazy. It's a shame. But uh, yeah, so paint your pedals gold. Go pedals from here. I'm gonna tighten these ones up. All right, and put the right side on here. Tightened up, pretty good. Give it one last little cinch on there. Uh, all right, I think we're in business. Ooh, she feels so good. Come over here and have a look see at this. Look at this bike, let me just get it all set up here. Look at this thing. Oh man, she is gorgeous. She is she is gorgeous. 
I'm gonna start from the bottom up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, one of the cool things about this frame too, I didn't mention, is it has this cool gusset on the front. And so if you, a lot of frames nowadays look exactly the same. Um, same kind of geometry, same looks. A lot of times the only thing that really sets it apart is the color of the bike and the stickers and like sometimes they have like a cool like seat stay. This is a seat stay right here. They might have a cool design on that instead of this bar like this. So a lot of times that's the only thing that sets it aside. I love that Haro kind of went back into their roots and did this wraparound gusset because this has some serious roots with Haro bikes. Um, a lot of the older stuff, older frames had these on it and so they decided with this lineage frame and a lot of the new frames that are coming out too to throw it back on there so just a cool little throwback honoring the history of Haro because Haro was the first one to do freestyle they're the first in freestyle Bob Haro invented freestyle so there you have it but yeah so that's the cool little thing through here two brakes bam whole lot of seat posts look at that <laughs> yeah there you have it that's the bike i'll be riding here in australia for the uh vans bull contest so um i think there's going to be actually a live stream for the contest so definitely try to check that out um i'm not sure if it'll be for this weekend but definitely for next weekend so if you guys go online and search the vans bull contest live stream just click it and watch. It's gonna be awesome. I think uh, Australia is five hours behind California, so um, eight hours behind the East Coast, uh, and I'm not sure wherever else you're at. You can do the math, and figure it out. But um, yeah, that's that. So uh, thanks for tuning in. That's my bike. That's my ride. Pretty sick. I love it. Uh, hopefully you guys do too. And um, like I said, I'm gonna do a bunch of videos here from Australia. So keep tuning in. Um, subscribe if you haven't like them comment just do everything man i appreciate it and um yeah we'll see you guys soon stay awesome peace